Hello, everybody. This is Tiffany with the Speak Up and Inspire series. And tonight we are going to be interviewing Miss Snow Simmons of Young Women Saved by Grace. We're going to be talking to Miss Snow about um, her in general, you know, her background growing up in the Queen City of Charlotte, North Carolina. And then we're just going to jump right into it to talk about her organization, Young Women Saved by Grace. But first, before we do that, we always tell you about Speak Up and Inspire series. This is 2020. We are in an awesome new year. So we are right now in our this episode 35. Yes, we are in episode 35 with Miss Snow Simmons. And we are very, very, very happy and proud that we are in this place on the Speak Up and Inspire series. On the Speak Up and Inspire series, we talk to people who are doing great things in the community who are inspiring their community and are people just like you and I. We often hear about celebrities and what they're doing. Um, we hear about, of course, the um, state officials, the president. We hear about celebrities and people that you can find in the magazines and the newspapers and the TVs, but very seldom do we hear about everyday people that are doing good things in the community. So that is the reason why we have the Speak Up and Inspire series um, podcast because we want to make sure that we are interviewing people that um, are doing great things in the community so that you know who these people are. So far this year, we have already had our anniversary um, podcast on January 13th, where you were able to reconnect with some of our past guests, Miss Iris Benton, um, also Miss Alicia Richardson, who is also our new co-host on the Speak Up and Inspire series. And we also talked to Mr. Jonathan Coleman, who doubled as a guest and also our videographers to make sure that we got caught everything on tape. But we also talked to our graphic designer um, for the Speak Up and Inspire series, Cedric Sanders. Tonight, we are going to be talking to Miss Snow um, Simmons of Young Women Saved by Grace. So we are going to be bringing her on live um, here in just a moment. And we are going to make sure that she is connecting so that all of her followers, her friends and family can see her as well. So Miss Snow, I have just added you to the live. If you can go to your page and accept it, and it should be on your live and momentarily. While you are accepting it on your page, we're just going to talk about some future guests. Um, we have coming up soon after Miss Snow, we are going to be um, talking to Miss Katrina Thomas. Next week, she is also one of our co-hosts and one of our regular guests on the Speak Up and Inspire series. She is going to be here with us next week talking to us about how she juggles being a working in, in as a full-time employee and doing what she does in her career, but also um, running her organization, Loving Yourself, No More Abuse. Ms. Katrina is also our new co-host for the Speak Up and Inspire series. And so she is going to be back on the Speak Up and Inspire series next week. So we're going to go ahead and get into this. Ms. Snow um, is holding on right now. Let's make sure that she is able to broadcast to her family on her end. And then we will get right into it. Ms. Snow Simmons, let's see. Do we have it? Yes, I see her right here. And it looks like we are ready to go. Let's make sure. Yes, we are. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring on Miss Snow right now. And here she comes. Three, two, one. Hi. Hi, Snow. How are you? Hi. 
Good, good. Well, welcome to the Speak Up and Inspire series. I know that we um, have been trying to get you on the podcast here for a minute, so I'm so happy that we were able to get you on tonight. Um, mm -hmm. I always like to make sure that I support uh, people that I call friends, and you definitely are a friend. Um, you also have been able to work directly with Miss Heaven, my daughter Heaven, um, with your organization. And you were very, very helpful to her as a mentor to her. So I wanted to get you on the Speak Up and Inspire series because I really want you to be able to have a platform, which I know you already do, but I want to be able to support you as well mm -hmm. because you were definitely beneficial to helping heaven. Um, heaven is t turning it now a preteen. She had her 12th birthday mm -hmm. on January 11th. And so I am very, very happy that you are still in her life, that you are still going to be her mentor, and that she still has the benefit of being one of your mentees with your organization, Young Women Saved by Grace. So tell us, how is it that, well, just tell us a little bit about you right now. Um, tell us your background. What kind of, what do you do as far as career? What, um, where are you from? Tell us a little bit about you. Well, I'm Snow Simmons. I'm 37. I'm native from the Queen City. Um, full time, I am a nanny and also a CNA. Um, how I came about um, Charlotte, living in so many different I say non privatized communities. Um, just growing up with a mother that's raising two kids, you know, with the stepfather, you know, somebody that really wasn't your father, but you had to, you know, gain to know him and gain to love him just as well as, you know, he was your father. Um, my mom, at the time, it was just me and my oldest brother. Uh, we grew up here in Charlotte in um, the Belmont community. And, you know, growing up, it was pretty much, it was kind of challenging because for me, I would say it was challenging due to the fact, you know, I had such a great stepfather, but at the same time, I had my biological father that was, you know, also living in the same city, but he just couldn't get himself together. You know, he couldn't, you know, straighten his life up. Um, so that's pretty much where my challenging days can became as a teen where well, I was a teenager I would say at age 13 between the ages of 13 and 15 is where my my biggest challenges came in it is when I started just being disobedient to my mom and my stepdad and just not just feeling like I wanted to do what I wanted to do in life and not listen to my parents so you know within my teenage years I had some rough times and some challenges um, in my teenage years that just really have strengthened me since I've been older, you know, because, like, without those days and those challenges that I experienced as a teen teenager, I don't think I'll be where I'm at today. Um, when I say challenges, yeah. Yeah. I faced a lot of challenges um, as far as domestic violence, dating gang members, you know, being in a gang relationship, um, just growing up in a drug environment, you know, being around, you know, in a drug infested neighborhood, you know, trying to maintain. And um, I had one experience that um, really kind of changed my life is uh, I was raped at 18 and left for dead, uh, me and a friend, but my friend, she didn't make it. Um, she had passed away. And um, I think that pretty much what really changed my life as being a pre-adult, you know, and, you know, I still live that day as if it was yesterday, you know, being 18, going to a party. Um, as we was in the party, you know, we drinking on we wasn't supposed to drink, smoking on we wasn't supposed to smoke, you know, doing things that pretty much our parents told us not to do. And that's what pretty much grew me to see that, okay, I'm 18 years old. I done lost a friend, um, a good friend, just going out to party and not listening to my parents. And um, being raped, you know, being raped, that takes a lot of toll on a young girl, especially 
a teenager, you know, somebody that, you know, think they got their whole life ahead of them, you know, trying to do right, but just so caught up in the world, you know? Yeah. 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 Um, so I, I think maybe I, I don't know if I misunderstood or I'm not sure. So you said that when you were 18, you were raped, correct? Correct. Right. Okay. And then you said a friend of yours died. Where was that from the same situation or was that a separate situation? It's uh on the same night. It was what we did. We had called ourselves, we went to uh Gastonia. We went to a mm -hmm. party. It mm -hmm. was three of us. And um we went with some dudes. One the girl that invited us, you know, she knew the dudes, but we didn't. We you know the first thing we can our mind is come on, let's just go to this mm -hmm. party and have fun. Mm -hmm. But while we was at the party, you know, we was in there, like I said, we was drinking and smoking, you know, just living life like like we was grown. And, you know, right. and it turned out to a tragedy. Um, I was raped. My friend was raped and um, ended up that my friend was laying beside me dead. In a oh, hotel no. in Gaston. So, you know, that really had touched me because the first thing came to my mind, like, dang. My mom don't know where I'm at. I don't just. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that, that, that was pretty much kind of changed my life a little bit, but it wasn't where I was supposed to be, I would say. Um, right. So, you know, I had that incident with my my close friend, she was murdered during the, you know, during the process of, you know, living a life that you thought you wanted to live, but at the same time, it wasn't for you, you know. And so every day right. after that, I pretty much, you know, it took a toll on me mentally. So I started being depressed. I started blaming myself. You know, I started just mm -hmm. continue trying to do right. But at the same time, I had a reputation to keep up in the streets because like I said, I was dating a gang, a gang member. Um, and, you know, with that reputation, you know, you got to keep up certain reputation when you're dealing with the streets. And that's, that thing, that's pretty much what got me so blinded to, you know, real life issues. And once I faced the challenges behind the bad decisions that I made, I think that's pretty much when I started changing. And, you know, for many years, one thing that I just now found out, probably I say a good three years ago, um, me and my mom, we, we didn't have pretty much the best relationship, but I can usually go talk to mm -hmm. her about anything. But some things I just felt like I was like, I didn't want to hurt her telling a lot of things. You know, I wanted to save her heart and a lot of stuff that I um, experienced and accomplished. But um, I would say 2017, it's when pretty much my life kind of changed and I grew up. I would say I grew up and matured. Um, back in 2015, um, I had a stroke at age 32. And oh, I didn't never know what, what, why, the, why I had a stroke. You know, I'm asking doctor questions. Why I had a stroke, you know, because I have sickle cell and thalassemia. I I'm battle sickle cell. And thalassemia. I've been battling sickle cell and thalassemia since birth. Um, so mm -hmm. I'm thinking, okay, maybe I, you know, when I had the stroke, I was thinking, well, this ain't, this can't be no stroke. Maybe it's a sickle cell crisis. So come to find okay. out, they did all the testing. I found out, you know, for sure it was a stroke because I was paralyzed. I was paralyzed on my left side. I couldn't talk. Mm. I had to go to uh, rehab. I had to go to a speech therapist you know, be, begin to be like myself again. And it took, I want to say, eight months at total for me to be who I am now, snow again. Um, mm -hmm. So um, mm -hmm. during that time, you know, I had a chance to speak with my mom, you know, and ask her questions that I never, you know, thought I would ask her. Like, like I said, we had a good relationship, but it wasn't mm -hmm. what I wanted to be. And, you know, I found out by talking to her, you know, just going to her and say, Mom, you know, what is it that I did to you to make you feel like I'm the bad child or, you know, like I'm the black sheep, you know, whatever. And one thing my mama told me, right. she said, mm -hmm. you're so rebellious. 
she was like you was rebellious yeah man, at a, at the team and you know and I look back, you know, and just think about the things that she said, like rebellious, like, oh, wow. You know, because back then, I didn't mm-hmm. nobody know about being rebellious. They just think, okay, they can just talk back. Right. But, you know, back in the day, we got slapped if we talk back, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. up in uh-huh. day, you know? Right. But, you know, and once she told me what, because that was, I think that was our biggest issue of our relationship, you know, the issue of not knowing, not knowing why. Right. So when I finally got right. the answer to why, you know, that changed my life completely. Like, dang, I really did this to my mom. I cussed her out. I talked junk to her. You know, I just treated her like she owed me something. And I felt that mm-hmm. way because I would say I felt that way. And I was so mm-hmm. rebellious because, like I said, my, bio- my biological father, he was on drugs. He was in and out of prison, you know. And, you know, I held my mama accountable mm-hmm. for it, but she wasn't, you know. And I had to grow to see that, you know, that wasn't her. That wasn't her fault. That was my dad's fault. And, you know, that he had to right. live up to what he did, you know. And um, to this day, you know, my dad still has his little challenges, still has his issues. But um, I think we got a better relationship now that I had when I was younger um, with communication right. and, you know, trying to, to, you know, pretty much get to know each other. But my dad, I couldn't, I couldn't like, thank that man enough. He had been in my life since I was two. And mm-hmm. you know, you know how some people they think the step parent be the worst. They be like, oh, they can't tell me what to do. And I, but really today, <laughs> yeah. you know, as I've grown older, I thank my stepdaddy because I used to be like, dang, I used to get beat. You know, why he beating me? He ain't my daddy. He ain't got no <laughs> for me. But you know, at the same right. time now, I see why. You know, because I was rough. I was like hardcore rough, and I see why they had to treat me the way they treated me. Y'all, you know, they still love me, but they love me. In a different way, right? Had to grow that wow, like that. wow! That I just learned a lot about you tonight. Um, you told me some of your story before, but I did not know all of this. Yeah. So it, it's it's you definitely have a, a story to tell, and definitely one that can help a lot of girls out here, or you know, just just any young person growing up. Um, was it hard for you to get? out of the gang, how were you able to separate yourself from the gang? Are you able to talk about that? Well, um, actually, like I said, I was just a gang member girlfriend, but it, it's a lot that comes with being a girlfriend of a gang member. Like, um, for many years, I had to, you know, duck and dodge my addresses, you know, all the way up until now, you know, I still keep my address here, and I, you know, so I just stay like, way far out. You know, I'm always changing addresses because of that because you never know you know who's still in it and you know who might have some type of you know grudge against the person that I was dating you know but Mm -hmm. now I just you know now that I found God I would pretty much say I'm not as scared as I was when I was Mm -hmm. dealing with these people you know now I just say hey you know I ain't did nothing to these people you know what you know they they can't come for me because I ain't did nothing but you know, right. I learned a lot with the gang member. Um, just being a girlfriend, you know, these kids out here. I, I was I was talking to um one of my mentees the other day, and we were speaking about um you know the homicides here in the city. You mm-hmm. know how they always saying it's gang related in most cases, but what what I wanted to especially about the gang as far as you know be, you know seeing it for my own self. That you know, gang members, it's like a family, it's like a big family per se, right? And there's a lot of loyalty that comes with that. And these days, these teenagers, they think they are in gangs and they want to be in these gangs so bad, but they really don't know the truth behind the real gang. You know, the gang members that were before them who was originally originated. You know, like Tuesday right. Williams, you know, for example, who created the gangs. You know. It come game being in the game is like that's a whole family to you. You know that it's a lot of loyalty with that. You know you it's it's a lot of reliability. You know it's a game being right. a game member, game member girlfriend. That's a liability by itself. And I was telling right. one of my mentees, you know, you know, being a game member girlfriend. You know, I seen a lot of stuff. I witnessed so much that you know, I was just scared for my own self, just witnessing stuff that you know, pretty much didn't. 
I wasn't even in. So it pretty much scared, it pretty much scared right. me for the most growing up, you know, having to watch your back, looking over your shoulder every day, making sure don't nobody come at you, you know, even though you ain't did nothing to nobody, but still because you, right. you know, like they say, the company that you keep, you know, you got to be careful with the company mm-hmm. you keep because they come to your keep can get you in a whole lot of trouble and get you in place, dark places that you don't want to be in. So that's what I learned about, yeah. the, you know, gang members. They just, yeah. the gang is just a big family, but they're doing the wrong things, you know. That's all it is. But it's a lot of loyalty yeah. that come behind it. That these young kids yeah. are coming up now, um, they want to be in it so bad, but they don't know what really come with it. Right, right. Um, I was talking to someone, and maybe two weeks ago, because I have no... I have no idea about gang life. So for me on the outside looking in, it doesn't, I guess it doesn't make sense to me because I'm like, when I hear of a gang, whenever you hear of a gang, you think of negative drugs, guns, violence, you know, initiations, which can be bad by itself. Um, But only thing I know about it, of course, is from what I see on TV and from news and so forth and so on. but I, I couldn't, I asked someone, I said, what is it that attracts a young person to a gang? And one of the, one of the main things they said and something that you just said is the family mm-hmm. and knowing that those people, you're loyal to them and they're loyal to you, no matter whether it's involved in gangs or, I mean, sorry, involved in crime or not. It's just having that family that a lot of them don't have or they're in a a dysfunctional family and they're looking for Mm -hmm. an additional family that's got their back and that's what was told to me to help me try to understand but i want to ask you that what attracts a young person to being in a gang especially if they know what kind of things that the gang is involved in what really from your perspective what attracts young people to gangs Pretty much just like just like I said, uh, pretty much like I said, it's a family. Like you know, like you could, for example, for me, you know, growing up, like I said, I didn't have that love for my biological daddy. So you know, I was out here looking for love in men that my daddy didn't give me. Mm-hmm. So say for right. you know, a young girl that's out here like me at 15 years old without a without a, a father figure, you know, they gonna. Mm-hmm be looking for love in the wrong places such as a man you know uh, and then you yes. know like you said it it comes gang come with a lot it, it's drugs but the most the most thing i think of and i think what got me was the money the fast uh, money that's what got me you know yeah. the yeah. fast money got me you know that's what got me into it because i had this 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 older guy i was dating he a gang member and he can go buy uh-huh. the jordans he can buy me things mm-hmm. that my mom can't give me or things that I couldn't get myself. You know, right. I go, I go to, I go to middle school. He pull up in this nice car, pick me up from school, and <laughs> and take me out. And yeah. I'm, you know, so yeah. I think that's what it is. It's, the, it's, it's more the money, and it's more mm-hmm. keeping up their reputation. It's it's more right. materialistic stuff. You know, and right. then sometimes, like I said, from a teenager's like me, like that didn't have love from a father. You know, that's what they go search for. They go search for loving a man, and maybe that man they're getting their love from a gang member. You know, so mm-hmm. they done got caught up in it just by wanting to be loved. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I um. You know, again, it's something that I'm not really familiar with, so it's really hard for me to to. I don't want to say understand, um, but just it's good to have perspective from someone who has actually, you know, been in that lifestyle. Um, growing up, I I know it wasn't drug dealers, but I, I dated a lot of, um, I'm sorry, it wasn't gang members, but I dated a lot of drug dealers. <laughs> um, and yeah, for yeah. me, um, you know, I was, I was, and it wasn't because I didn't have the love of my of my father because I I truly believe that my father was um, loved me very much, um, but 
I was raped at a, at a very young age. And so all of my dating lifestyle, I've always dated older men. And the older men that I dated, I kept coming across drug dealers. So for me, it was a sense of security. Um, they were older men. I, I, like you said, I had Jordans, I had jewelry, and anything I wanted, I could have. Um, but I also had to be very careful because I I didn't date no little guys. I dated big guys that were doing big things. <laughs> um, and so I had to watch my back sometimes with the people, with the guys that I dated as well. Um, so I, that I can relate to, you know, just, just being attracted to the wrong men. Um, you know, my, my life started off with trauma at a very young age, just like with you, you know, with you being raped, I lost my virginity to rape. And um, I met a, a, a guy that was older than me. He was very good to me, um, but he, he, was, he was a drug dealer. Um, but he treated me very well. He protected me very well. I, I never wanted for anything. Um, I, I, he protected me. And I think that, that was what really, really um, kept me with him as long as I did. Otherwise, than being a, my first love and him loving me and him protecting me, but just having that sense of security and knowing that if I needed anything, I knew that I had somebody that was going to be able to help me and was going to be able to provide things for me. Um, that wasn't just it. Him and I had a, a, an amazing relationship, but I can understand the part of, you know, being with someone who is leading a lifestyle that is not, healthy that's not good for young girls to be involved with um so i definitely understand that so when it comes to your organization young women saved by grace or no let me back up at what point in your life did you say that's enough i'm not going to be the gang member's girlfriend anymore i'm not gonna be the hard head i'm not gonna you know be the one that is kind of my family is kind of the outcast, I guess, from, from what I'm understanding. So what, what finally woke, woke you up to say, you know, that's it. I can't keep doing this. What, what was that moment for you? I like to always ask people when they, when they have had a, a backup. Mm -hmm. Beyond what, what woke me up was my strength. I don't think I was with you. To be honest, when I had that stroke and couldn't do for myself and had to relive a life, you know, all over again, that's what woke me up. Me having a stroke at age 32 back in 2015. That's when my life totally changed. And, you know, uh -huh. I was like, well, you know, I still had boyfriends that was still in the streets, but at the same time, uh -huh. you know, I had to tell myself, you know, you better than this. You worth more than this. You know, and like like right. now, I just got out of a, uh, I just got out of a five and a half year relationship uh, last year. Because, you know, I felt like I'm more than just dealing with drug dealers. I'm more than dealing with street mm. people, you know, men from the street. So I felt like, you know, how, you know, I, I would grow up in the church. You know, my mama raised us in the church. But at the same time, you know, I had to find God for myself. And I think by me having that stroke sitting on that hospital bed, I think that's pretty much where I started my transitioning with finding God. What happened was um, when I was listening to, um, I was on Facebook and I was listening to uh, this prayer call, uh, which um, I always been a fan of Lil Boosie, the rapper. Me and Lil Boosie, I always, you know, couldn't okay. even, when he, even when he did his five years in, in prison. That's when me and him really got connected. connected. So one day I got online because I seen okay. him post about his, his cousin had his prayer line. So when I had the stroke, Mm -hmm. I got on the prayer line, and I was uh, actually able to talk, go live on the prayer line and tell them my story. And um, so I went on the prayer line. You know, they prayed for me. Um, I got connected with his name is Carvis Webb. He, Carvis Webb, they call him Donk. He's Lil Boosie's first cousin. They live um, from Louisiana, Baton Rouge. Right now he lives in Atlanta, Georgia. You know, I, I got to grow a relationship with Donkey, which now I call him my big brother. Um, because when I had my stroke, he prayed for me, you know, and seemed like my, my mind just went in a totally different direction once I started connecting with his prayer, prayer line. And, you know, uh, mm -hmm. 
So I got connected with the prayer line and I was on it every Saturday morning. And then one day, um, I say two after I had my stroke, 2016, I had moved from Charlotte to Fayetteville because I, my um, fiance at the time, you know, he was in prison and going through the system. So I moved there to try to be close with him to, you know, make sure I can visit and all that stuff. So I moved to Fayetteville. I stayed in Fayetteville, North Carolina for two years. And during that time I stayed, you know, I was mm -hmm. by myself, didn't have no family, only had my kids with me. So in that time, I think I pretty much had a lot of time with God because I didn't have no distractions. And so what I did, right. you know, I spent that time, them two years in Fayetteville, pretty much getting close to God, praying, being on the prayer line every Saturday. And so 2016, I get a call from Brother Donkey, and he was like, guess what? I want you to come on this show with me. And I was like, go on a show? You know, what you want me to go on a show for? <laughs> so I was, actually, uh -huh. uh, I was actually, you know, granted the nomination to go on the Creflo Dollar Show, Your World, to tell my testimony from okay. having a stroke, how I recovered from the stroke. And, you know, mm -hmm. what was my next move in life with grace, you know? And I think during those years, I found grace, you know, okay. being in that, you know, being in that, out of that dark place in life and being somewhere that I can really think and, you know, have my time with God. So I think that's right. pretty much what got me where I'm at today. And so 2017, I just moved back here in Charlotte. I moved back here um, and I, you know, I came home and I was like, you know, what do you think I should do? Because when I was mm -hmm. in Bedville, that's why I started Young Women Saved by Grace. I originally started in okay. Bedville. Uh, so okay. When I had three of my um daughter's friends that they had started going to school with, that they, you know, my kids, they so easily to make friends. So it was it was three young ladies. Mm -hmm. They used to come over every day, you know, come over the weekend. We used to go hang out at the skates. Um, Kate Skate Ring in, in Fayetteville, you know, uh -huh. just have like pretty much girls night out every Friday night. So that's why, that's how I started Young Women Saved by Grace. I got three of my um, okay. daughter's friends and my two daughters together and we just hung out every Friday night. We went different places on a Friday night, hung out and just enjoyed life. And, you know, I was like, well, right. you know, that was so amazing to me to be able to, you know, sit there and just give something to them that I couldn't give myself or, you know, I didn't have growing up. And then one thing I did notice right. that, you know, on them Friday nights, you know, I also, you know, ask the girl questions like, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? You know, what you got going on in life that you want to change? Stuff like that. And so I grew a relationship with the, the, these three young ladies to where now we are so close. They caught me, they got mama, you know, they called me for everything. We grew up relationship <laughs> okay. this way, everlasting. And um one of my girls that we um started with, um, I think you I think I told you about this. She got killed at Fayetteville. She was sixteen years old. She got killed last October. Yeah. And we had to um, you know, yes. I had to witness that burial, you know, and that pretty much, you know, hurt me to my soul because like I said, I grew a relationship with them when I first started this organization to the point, you know, mm -hmm. they was like daughters to me. You know, they weren't just my daughter's friends. They like God daughters to me, daughters that God sent for me to, you know, stay in life. And when she passed and I got the news about her getting murdered, you know, that pretty much took a lot out of me as a mother. And that, that also pretty much changed a lot of aspects in my life as well. You know, like I tell people, because you at a certain place in your life don't mean you can't keep growing, you know? And I've seen, That's okay, true. I'm 37, but because I'm 37 don't mean I ain't still learning. I can't still grow, you know? And so that's what I tell people, yeah. you know, my days, you know, I I spend my days, you know, trying to gain more knowledge, gain more wisdom from different people. And I, one thing I know about, you know, walking as a believer is that, you know, you can't keep surrounding yourself around the same people think you're going to get the different results, you know? Mm -hmm. and I had to tell myself that every that day now, still, you know, even because you, you know me, I got a kind heart. That's, that's you know, I'm just a, yes. a giver and a helper, you know, that's just me. And, you know, I try to tell myself every day, you know, some people you can't help. Some you can, some you can't. Right. And, 
I think I think my biggest issue with life is I be trying to help so many people, but at the end of the day, I'm the one getting hurt <laughs> in some in some yeah. circ- circumstances. So that's why right. I just feel like right now what I want to do is pretty much, you know, I always tell myself, you can't be a leader unless you got yourself all the way together, you know. And that's why I took out time, mm. you know, <laughs> that out is so of my true. organization to give myself some space because I was like, mm-hmm. how am I going to be in here teaching these girls not to do this, teaching them this and teaching them, you know, positive, to be positive. When I'm out here still clubbing and now yeah. doing still, you know, in the world, you know, I had to. I had to that's really <laughs> Come wait, wait, wait. Like, in the world, I'm gonna be. Ain't, okay, ain't nothing. Girl. Ain't nothing I'm wrong. Like, ain't nothing wrong, wrong going out and enjoying yourself. <laughs> but it, it ain't nothing wrong with it. But it's how you do it. You know? It ain't. It, and I have right. to tell myself right. it. It ain't right. what you do. It's how yeah. you do. You know. So. I right, had, you know, exactly. Step back and get exactly. Myself, you know, I had to step back and get myself together. It was like, okay, I can't be out here telling these girls they can't do this, and I'm doing what I'm what they I told them not to do, you know. So, you know, that pretty much right. would, would really right. got me in a whole different direction with my program for 2020. You know, I have a lot of things planned right. for my program, and what people don't know in this mm-hmm. city about my program, you know. I still haven't got my 501c3. I'm working on that. Mm-hmm. But I've been I've been mm-hmm. operating this program off of faith. I've been operating this program straight strictly mm-hmm. off of faith. Mm-hmm. You know, I take my funds mm-hmm. that I make on my with my my job and my other business and I put it fully towards this program. And you know, people ask me mm-hmm. well, why you don't ask for help? Why you don't, you know, why you don't ask for help? The reason why I had not been asking for help because when I did ask for help, the people that I asked for help, um, they was the wrong people. Put it like that. Yeah. You know, the mm-hmm. people that I was going to, you know, they they weren't in God, God sent, I say. They weren't okay. God sent. And then now, so now, you know, what I want to do, I want to surround myself about around positive people you know right. people that I can that I know that can help me grow because mm-hmm. that's that's what I need in order to make my business successful you know because like it sure is. See, you got sure your, is. your business your, your business you know been established for a long for over a year now and you know you growing see mm-hmm. I need to be around somebody that's growing I don't need to be around no stuck people and that's what my vision is for 2020 right. Um, what my plans are is, um, this weekend, I'm going to have, um, a new registration for 2020 to register new girls. The program is from ages eight to 18. So, um, what we're going to do this weekend, we're going to, you can sign your chat up online at our website. You can sign our chat, your chat up over the phone through me. Um, what I do, I just, um, I don't want nobody to feel because they don't have no money, their child can't be in my program. Because my program right. is a free program. And a lot of people ask okay. me, why you don't charge? You know, why you don't charge? Because and I feel like this, anything God give you, why charge for it? Because he's giving it to you. It's already yours. You know, he the one gave right. you the vision. So why charge for it? You know, how right. you don't charge? Did God charge you? For what he gave to give you every day, you know. So you know, you yeah. know, that's how I see my program. Yeah. You know, and I feel yeah. like, you know, since like like you say, heaven, heaven came to my summer camp what two two summers in a row, and mm-hmm. she learned we did so much that I, you know, I sat back and was like, dang, God I did this, you know, because when I first started the, the summer camp, I didn't know where I was going with it. I didn't know. If, where it was gonna lead me and where it was gonna lead them children. I was like, man, I don't even know I'm gonna do it this year because look, it, it was, you know, we did so much, but at the same time, I think the right. lack, I think the lack of um perseverance then was a building. You know, where's we gonna have yeah. that? So you know, God led us to have it at the library. Had a good turnout. Mm-hmm. We had twenty girls mm-hmm. that summer. You know, in last summer we had yeah. a good turnout. Yeah. You know. And, and you know what I learned yeah. another thing about um with God is you know it don't you don't have a you don't have to have 
a bunch of people to do God work. You can just use oh, like you can just that use is so true. two or three. You yes. know, you know? Yes. And, yes. and that's what I say. Yes. Like, like I, want- I have still four girls in the group, including heaven. So I was right. like, well, you know, mm-hmm. God, you know, you know, just, just seeing so much happening out here, like the little girl that got killed at Concord Mills, you know, that was right across the street from me. And, you know, mm-hmm. that took a toll on me as a mother because my baby was just at that mall the day before in Dave and Buster's with her basketball team. So it was like, wow, my, mm-hmm. baby, my baby was just was at the same place. You know, wonder if that could have been my daughter, you know. And so that's why I want these parents to yeah. understand. You have the resources. You have the programs out here. But it's up to you to be that parent and sign these kids yes. up for these and get the resources that's out here. Don't be scared right. to get the resources that out here because your pride too high. Because I'm going to tell you, I came from right. being homeless. When, before I moved here, I was homeless sleeping in my car, mm-hmm. you know, with my two children. Mm-hmm. You know, and now my pride was so high to the point I didn't want to go to my family because I felt like I always feel like the black sheep and feel like they didn't care. You know, but at the same time, I had to swallow my pride as a woman and as a mother and to say, you know, some things you might not think is for you. It's for you through different people and through different resources. And that's how I became Young Women Saved by Grace founder, because I used my resources and I used everything that was in my present at that time to keep going. And, and that's what I want to continue to do. I want this program to, um, I want, what I want the girls to get out of this program, I want every girl to come through this program to be successful entrepreneurs, successful leaders mm-hmm. in their community. And like I said, this mm-hmm. program is from 8 to 18. Um, what I do, I also go into the schools. I'm registered in the schools to go mentor in the schools. So okay. now that I'm able to go into the side of school to mentor, you know, I go check on my girls, see how they're doing academically, you know, mm-hmm. see what we can do in this program to keep them growing, you know, and keep them right. going. Because just like I said, we all have life challenges no matter what age we are. So I want these girls to come through this program just like my daughters, and just like heaven. You can come in here and talk to mm-hmm. Ms. Snow about anything, and we're going to get through it together. Right, right. Yes. Um, I know that um, heaven, she wasn't able to participate last last summer because she was with her for the summer. But um, I know that you had a really, really big impact thing, on her. Last year, yeah. she was never <laughs> But... She uh-huh. gave me some ideas for last summer, and I used them to the ability. She did. She did. She gave good, us a lot of ideas, good. and we used all uh-huh. our ideas last summer. So, yeah, uh, heaven is a... Uh, she she didn't have to be there physically, but... <laughs> I will definitely let her know that heaven um, is definitely when I take her out in the community. She she always wants to be in the community. She all she's always willing to help somebody. Um, she really enjoys being around seniors. That's one. That's something that she really enjoys doing. But she's also very outspoken. I have a very outspoken, independent young lady in the making who I think is going to really help a lot of people as she gets older. Um, and she will definitely speak her mind though so i'm trying to help her channel that aggressive side of her so (laughs) that it doesn't come off as disrespectful to some people it comes off as disrespectful but really she's just someone who 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 i have taught to be able to express herself now she just has to learn how to express herself in a way that um doesn't put people off because she's young so people don't know how to take it when she when she speaks out and she wants to talk about different things. Um, but I'm, I'm very proud of her and I know that she's gonna be excited to get back um, in your program. I do have a couple of questions for you. Um, okay. With Young Women Saved by Grace, I already, I already know the answer, but how did you come up with the name of Young Women Saved by Grace? And tell me what your mission statement is. Um, Young Women Saved by Grace, I came up with that name 
uh, on the bedside when I had my stroke. Uh, mm-hmm. I felt like you know, I was saved by grace, God's grace. Mm-hmm. So that's how I came up with right. the young women saved by grace. Because um, at that time, that moment in my life, you know, I sat on that bed, you know, not being able to pretty much talk clearly, not being able to walk, uh, walking on a walker, paralyzed on the left side. You know, I asked God in that moment, mm-hmm. you know, God, I know that you kept me here. I'm battling sickle cell, thalassemia. I'm battling so many health issues. You know, it got to be something that you want me to do. And he told me, he said, right. I want you to go out into your community where you where you grew up, the darkest places of your life. And I want you to grab them young mm-hmm. women up. And I want you to change mm-hmm. their life. So that's how I got mm-hmm. young women saved by grace. Well, my mission, mm-hmm. my mission is well, I, to uh, uh-huh. uh, educate, encourage, empower, and inspire young women to become be- what I say, to become successful entrepreneurs and great leaders in their community. Mm-hmm. I want them to grow strong, be strong willed and strong in knowledge and wisdom. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Well, you and are I'm definitely my, doing my, that. My, um, I've seen it in my, my, favorite, my favorite motto is you can be whatever you want to be as long as you put your mind and your heart to it. Because everything starts with your mindset. I agree. That is so true. That's so true. Um, When I'm out in the community talking to people about going from being a victim to being a survivor, that's one of the one things that I impress upon um, the victims that we're talking to and the people in the community is that everything starts with your mental health. You have to start with your mental health because without without being healthy mentally um, and emotionally, then you're you're not going to be able to move from that victim state of mind to being a survivor. So yes, I'm glad that you are um, an advocate of mental health as well because that's very important. And a lot of people um, miss that they they ignore that mental health is important and that it rules everything in your life. Right. Um, and we're losing right. a lot of people. Um, I lost a friend yesterday morning to suicide and, um, you know, we never know what people, what people are going through. And so it's really even more important to me to be able to speak up and talk about mental health, talk about suicide, talk about the suicide risk, but also just helping and listening to anybody that needs to, to, to talk and who needs to vent because we just never know what people are going through. And it's, it's just, um, it's emotional to, to lose someone, even though her and I were not very close, her partner and I, I, you know, I consider her a friend and it's, it's, it's just, I'm still rocked by the fact that this is someone I was spending time in her home, you know, over there, her, I've spent time with her, 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 you know, her partner's child and the twins have been over there and now, and now she's gone. Um, so yeah, we. That's another thing that um, America, I hope you'll allow very, me to come talk to your girl about suicide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it is mental health um, and suicide. That's something that we need to talk about. It's it, it, it's a big issue now too in these children, and um, one thing I had mm-hmm. to tell a parent, I had to tell, I just had a child that was um, temporarily living with me, um, try to commit suicide mm-hmm. last week. And I tried to uh, pretty mm. much tell the parent, you know, this child need help. I even referred her to mm-hmm. a therapist, but she refused to, you know, mm-hmm. use my resource. But one thing I tell these parents, mm. don't think, don't look over mental health issues because, you know, suicide mm-hmm. is a lot is a all time high in children nowadays. And you know, because you don't it see is. it don't mean it can't happen um, because mm-hmm. like um, I had like this parent she said oh well my son would never do this he won't never do this. you never know what your child going through mentally and, yeah. and, and the part of the problem was and you know these parents uh, but I learned too is domestic violence in the household you know uh, you got to be mindful who you date who you bring around mm. your children and what you oh, see of you, 
you know, as a yes. parent. Yeah. Because yes. I just I just went through this I just went through this a couple of days ago where I had a friend, she's in domestic violence, but she don't want to accept it as the truth. So she'd rather fall out with me as a friend than get help. You know, so yeah, I, I you know, I'm a I domestic violence uh, advocate, yeah. Yeah. Um I know that you've been you're a survivor of domestic violence. Yeah, and I'm a survivor of domestic violence and it's it's really it's really hard when we see people who are in abusive relationships who we are trying to reach out to them, we're trying to support them, we're trying to give them resources, right. like you said, to the to, to the mother, and they just won't take it. And then the next thing you know, either they've lost their life, the person has hurt their child, right. or you know, they're calling us from the hospital because the person has beat them up so severely that they're in the hospital. Um, right. Uh, you know, it's being being a survivor gives you insight to things that even before the hit comes, we can see that this person is is a violent person. Um, Personality-wise, the things that they do, um, there's always signs. There's ne I've never, ever, ever gone out to help a victim who didn't have some kind of sign of the abuse that's in a relationship. But sometimes- I told her, mm -hmm. like, People don't understand domestic violence is different different ways. It can be emotional, it can be physical, social, yes. financial. You know, it's different yes. in yes. different mm -hmm. ways to it, you know, and people don't yeah don't understand it. Is. You know, because he didn't hit on you don't mean that he's not abusing you, you know. That is Other so true. That is so true. It is, it is, and it's and it's so sad, especially when these women have daughters. And they have sons at home, and they're letting this behavior right. happen, mm -hmm. and they're not doing anything about it, um, or they're in denial because they did just want a man right. in the house. I mean, right. you know, I, I get it. Everybody wants right. to be loved. Everybody wants to have companionship, but it's not just about you when you have children in the house. You have to think about right. your daughters watching this, your son mm -hmm. watching this. Um, and again, you're right. The person doesn't have to beat you up for them to be abusive. You know, you don't allow a man or a woman to call you out your name. You don't let a man or a woman, you know, control every aspect of your life. Um, there's so many different, there's, there are different forms of domestic violence without being hit. And sometimes emotional and um, uh, sexual abuse happen in relationships right. that right. unfortunately can be even more detrimental than actually physically being hit. Bruises go away, but that emotion, those emotional scars that come from the verbal and emotional abuse of domestic violence can be, can just, can be life-threatening too. So, yeah. Yeah. I hope she gets help because that, that, that's a, that's very sensitive. That, that's that's very sensitive. I, want to, um, touch bases on, I want to touch bases on that as well. Cause now you know how now these teenagers, they dating. Yeah, so they, you know they're thinking. You know, some of them thinking it's okay to just be talked to any kind of ways, and mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. play fighting and all that. You know, so yeah, I also yeah. want to touch bases on domestic violence, human trafficking as well. Um, in the program yeah. this year, uh, I'm um connected to A21. It's the um human trafficking organization. Um, I'm connected mm -hmm. to with um Pastor Christine Kane. Uh, I met her as mm -hmm. a member of Elevation, um, and she has this organization okay. called A21, uh, where they touch bases a lot um, in different countries, cities. Um, they go uh -huh. through marches and all kind of uh, advocacy for human trafficking. Um, so okay. I want to also touch bases on that this year uh, with the girls. Um, it's a lot that need to be um, pretty much taught um, because, like you yeah. said, being blind to things you never know and you until it happened to you. You know, that's the worst yeah, thing that's is being sure. blindsided by life. You know. Yeah. I oh I, I applaud you for that. I applaud you for including mental health because everything that every aspect of our life starts with mental health. And I also applaud you for wanting to talk to the girls about domestic violence and, and trafficking because all of those are on the rise, including suicide. And we, we really need to take time to have these candid conversations with our kids. Expect and I don't want to say especially our girls, 
but our girls are being mostly affected by trafficking, mostly affected by domestic violence. Um, and so we really need to talk to our young girls, but also our, our boys as well. They need to be educated about domestic violence and what they sh should and should not do when it comes mm -hmm. to dating our, our girls and our daughters. Um, but also to be able to protect their sisters and their mothers and, and just knowing the signs so they can help somebody else if they see it, even among their, their own friends. Because the kids know they're on in their circles and it's up for us to educate them so that they can also be able to speak up and help each other, even if, you know, their parents may not understand or not know what's going on. If you know what's going on, we need our, we need our children to be able to speak up to help each other. Um, there are a couple of questions out there. So I want to make sure that we uh, cover the questions because we have a couple of minutes left. So I'm going to the thread and we have some pretty good questions. Um, it looks like somebody said that they have possibly gone to school with you, Mr. Jonathan Coleman. So make sure that you touch base with him and hopefully catch up and see who he is. Um, he does a lot of marketing and advertising for small businesses and for entrepreneurs. So he would really be a good resource for you um, getting young women saved by grace out there um he's definitely been a good resource for um for me for a butterfly visions project and speak up and inspire series getting us out there advertising marketing um getting interviews for me on radio shows and magazines so he would really be a good resource for you um so please reach out to him his name is jonathan coleman um we have miss shy she's been a guest on our show and she says do you feel that knowing and being involved with a gang that it had a positive impact on you in some way? And what has this helped you to be able to not just relate to those who have also experienced what you went through, but also help them to know that they can overcome and get through? So that's a two part question. Did you find that there was anything positive in your relationship with the gang? How, how has it been positive to you? And how are you using what you experienced um, being in a relationship with, uh, with in a gang? Um, how has that helped you to show others that they can get out and that they can overcome the adversities that they've, that they've gone through? Um, positive wise, I don't think I can say positive, but I got out of it, uh, being protect, you know, protecting others, um, in a, in a positive way, basically, mm -hmm. you know, um, like I said, gang, gang, I wasn't really in it to in it, in it, but you know, but the things that I saw, you know, mm. it, it made me look at the way you treat people, you know, the how to treat people. It taught me, mm -hmm. you know, the life of materialistic things, you know, you don't have to live based on materialism. Right. Uh, right. I say anybody that's dealing with it, pretty much, um, what I got out of it as far as getting out of it was, um, you got to maintain your own respect and your own character. You know, you can't, yeah. you got to, yeah. you know, sometimes, yeah. Yeah. you know, sometimes, you know, because I was a girlfriend, I mean, I, you know, affiliated with a majority of the stuff that they did. But at the same time, I had to protect my own character and my own reputation as a person and as a mother when mm -hmm. I became a, right. a mother at 21, right. 23. So um, I think what I would right. say mm -hmm. as far as getting out, um, Cause I really don't know how the gang is today because it was different back when I was in it. You know, today these people, these right. these people, they want to be in gangs, but they really not in gangs. Like, um, so what right. I would say is, you know, if you know you in the gang and you and it's something that you had to get initiated in, like beat up and or something done to to get in, yeah, it's gonna be hard for you to get out of that because. It's a mental thing, like you, like I say, it's mental. It's a mental abuse when it comes to that. So what you gotta right. do, as far as right. to, you know, win yourself out of it, is you gotta, you know, mentally, mentally stabilize yourself to, you know, want to shy mm -hmm. away from the connection. Once you shy away from the connection and the people that you right. know that's involved, that's what's gonna save you. Mm hmm. Right. Right. Good. I like that. That's that's good advice. Once you know that you want to get out, then you have to mentally prepare yourself to get out. I totally agree. I totally agree. Um, we had another question. Um, what do you do to prevent 
and stop this from happening to maybe your daughters or the girls and young women saved by grace? How do you prevent them from um, joining these gangs or just falling in under bad influences? What, do you, what are you doing to keep other girls and your um, daughters what do, what, from what falling in? Um, like I said, I host different workshops and different seminars on different subjects and different life challenges uh so that's what i do i host like a seminar or i have i go and meet with my girls on a weekly basis um that i'm connected to and we just talk about life like you know i t you know i'm i'm just the type of person i don't hold nothing back i keep it real and that's what i tell my parents mm -hmm. they have these children that's coming to me i'm not gonna sugarcoat nothing with your child i'm just gonna be real with you i'm gonna tell your child what's up and tell them facts. Right. I can't speak nobody fakeness. I can't tell right. nobody it's something that I haven't experienced. <laughs> so that's what I tell these right. these parents. You know, that's why I be want. That's why my main thing this year with this program, I want these parents to be involved because I feel as a mentor that okay, I'm out here talking to your kid by myself, and the mm -hmm. kid go home and tell you, well, Miss Stoke told me this, and you get offended. Don't get offended by what Miss Snow telling them because it's the truth. But you don't right. want to tell right. them the truth. You know, I, I, that's right. Why I, I, right now, I just want the parents mm. to start getting involved <laughs> and coming to these seminars, coming to these meetings, right. so they can see what Miss Snow's saying. Because, mm -hmm. like I tell, even even having to tell you, Miss Snow say she going to keep it real. She don't care, you know, because that's just me. I don't, I don't give no <laughs> qualified information. That's just not me, you know, because I want right. these kids to know the right. truth. I Like my kids, my kids are telling right. me, I got two daughters, they 13 and 15. I, I tell them, I, you can mm -hmm. tell me about anything, good or bad. I'd rather hear it and we can mm -hmm. get through it together. And that's how I treat my mentees. You come to me, I don't care if it's good right. or bad. We're going to get through this together. Whether we got to go get a resource right. out here in the community to help us, we're uh, we going to get it. We're going to get through it. And we're going to come out of it successfully. Right. And that's what these right. most kids That's, that's really out good. Here, they are so fearful of just uh, speaking out. You know, and with me in my mm -hmm. um, three years of being in this organization, being a leader in this organization, you, you know, I was so surprised at how even I even got half of my mentees to just speak out to me, you know, speak out what they've been through, mm -hmm. you know, speak out what they what they experience or what they want to, you know, do in life. You know, some kids just scared of, scared to talk to people just because. You know, back when I was growing up, you know, your parents used to say, well, stays in my house. What goes on in my house stays in my house. Right. That's how <laughs> yeah. you see Yeah, that's still true. Still are. You know, which is okay. Mm -hmm. What goes in my house is stay in my house, right. but to a certain extent. You know what I'm saying? Don't right. have these kids right. for of life yeah. and what goes on in life because they need to be able to get out here if they can't speak to you to speak to somebody else that they can feel comfortable with. And that's what I do. Right, um, that's right. pretty much and what what I stand for with this with this organization. That's pretty much my my main thing is making sure that I can touch these mm -hmm. kids in a positive way enough to where if they can't go to their parent and talk to their parent about it, they can come to me. And even if you come to me, you know I can get I can set up a meeting where me, you, and your mom or your dad or your whole family, whoever you having an issue with, we can get together. And we can solve right. the problem together as a as a team. You know, it takes teamwork. Right. It don't take just one person to raise a child. It take more. It take the community. It take you know, because when I grew up, the community. That is so true. That's how I want it. That's how I want my program. It's mm -hmm. just oh, it's about snow. No, it's not about snow. It's about me and my community here in Charlotte, Atlanta, South Carolina, and I also meant to tell y'all, we are in Haiti. We are sponsoring this orphanage okay. in Haiti. Um, we started two months ago with our program. Okay. We have a translator over there. His name is DeJerry. Uh, he speaks English. And he's teaching okay. the girls everything that I teach him. He teach them. So we also are mentoring in Haiti now. Oh, wow. That is so awesome. Congratulations. 
Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah, we, we definitely have to do this together. And I like your, your approach. And I do feel that, you know, you're not a babysitter. We're not just dropping off our girls to your no. house so that we can go out on date night and do what we want to do. You're not a babysitter. You're there to be a mentor to help these girls. Right. So parents need to be involved. They need to be your partner because if, and you know, and I, I take no offense to that. If my daughter can't talk to me, which I have an open policy with my kids, come and talk to me, right. don't lie to me, let's talk about it and let's right. get through it. But if they can't talk to me, I am I 100% encourage her to come and talk to, to come talk to you or to talk to her other mentor, Miss Katrina or Miss Alana. If you can't talk to me, talk to someone so that we can get together right. and help you. So I'm, I'm so happy that you have that. And I also know that you, you stand by that because I've seen you, I've seen that with you in heaven. And I've seen that with, you know, what you have already done with her being involved. And, um, it definitely mm -hmm. is parents, have to be actively involved in their kids' life and stop letting other people raise our kids. It's okay to have right. help, but you are a helper. You are a helper with our children. You are not our our children's parents. Right. And we have to be involved. Right. We have to be there. We have to come for do workshops. We have to come and volunteer. Um, and I, you know that we are always here, um, Butterfly Visions Project and the Speak Up and Aspire series to come and and help do workshops and talk about mental health, talk about domestic violence, right. talk about de teen dating. Right. Um, we have to do it together because our, 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 our kids need us. It is so much going on out here. We can't even let our kids go out and play anymore of fear of someone snatching right. our children. So we have, to, we have to work together. We have to. Yes, exactly. definitely. And that's, that's what I, that's yeah. what I my goal is to even have a therapist on call mm -hmm. just for these type of situations. Um, to yeah. where we have a, a therapist that's linked in within the group that, you know, if we have an emergency, we can get on the phone and, you know, have that resource. Yes. Yes. Well, I can definitely refer you to a couple of um, therapists that I think would be willing to be accessible to you. So I would be willing to, to do that. And I'll do that. Um, either tonight or in the morning. I want to reach out to them and make sure it's okay to pass their information. But um, Butterfly okay. Visions has a partnership okay. with two organizations. And out of those two, I know that they have some independent therapists that I would like to pass along to you. That would be great for young women saved by grace. I got a question. Yes, ma'am. Another thing I was going to do, I don't know how, I, don't, mm -hmm. I just wanted to, I, another thing that I wanted to touch bases on is uh -huh. the LGBT community? Yes, yes. Um, because um, I wanted to touch bases on that as well, but I just want these mm -hmm. kids to know that don't be afraid of that when it comes to your kids, because you know it's a lot of that going on nowadays, and you know you gotta accept your child for who they are. Yeah. Um, no matter what, you know. Um, and that's another thing I wanted to you know touch bases on too. You know, so the you know these parents can feel comfortable with who their kids are. Yeah. Well, you know, this Thursday, and you've been with us before to Time Out Youth Group. Um, that's a an organization for LGBTQ um, youth. You've been there with me before with your girls. Um, it's a great organization. We go there pretty regularly throughout the year to be there with the kids there because it it sometimes it's heartbreaking to hear their stories about how they've been put out because they came out to their parents. But there's also some very, very supportive parents who you see coming and their kids off, hugging on their on their kids as they go into the center. So I think that's amazing. And I, of course, can connect you um, into that organization, I mean, into um, to the LGBTQ community. Um, I'm a bit ag advocate in the community myself um, because I identify myself. And um, it, it's, it's important. That's one of the reasons um, that we believe we don't know for sure why the young lady um, felt the need to take her life the other day is because she was a lesbian and her her family was not accepting and that was really hard for her to have to deal with that. Um, so it's it's Smart. so important that we love and support our children no matter who they love, who they 
what they had done. As long as they're not out here killing each other and and criminals and <laughs> doing all kinds of right, crazy right. things, then we need right. to support them. Right. We need to love them. We can't we can't ostracize them. We can't make them feel like outcasts and and right. you know losing our use because mm -hmm. they don't feel that they have a place within their own family. You know it, it's it's right. horrible. So. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're going to be a timeout youth group this Thursday, and um, you are welcome to, to join us as always, um, because okay. when, every time we go there, we learn something from those kids, and we are right. able to, to hear their stories, hear how they're dealing with things in the schools because of their sexual preference, how they're dealing with their families, um, and yeah, I think that's it's a big part of society now, and kids know about it probably more than we do. <laughs> so I think that's yeah, good. I think do. that's a good thing. To add. Yeah. Definitely a good thing to add. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, our time is running short. We've actually gone over by nine minutes, but you, I've, I've learned a lot about you tonight, um, and I really think that you should share your story more on a on a speaker platform um i think you would do wonderful at that i think you can reach a lot of people i think you can help a lot of people in addition to young women saved by grace um i believe in what you're doing and i can really speak on what you're doing because i've seen you with my daughter and i see the impact you you did you made with her you were very real you were very candid you showed you shared your story and i i believe in in being very honest when we're dealing with our kids because that's what they need they need people that are going to be honest and are going to tell them how it is and and be on their level that they can talk to us in their language and we can be there to, to support them no matter where they are in their life absolutely yes. Yes. So thank you so much. I appreciate having you on. Um, please let me know if any events you have coming up. Please share them with me. Please tag me. Um, we are definitely going to have you back on the podcast so we can see the progress that you're doing um, in any way that we can support you. If you have something going on and you say, Tiffany, I need to get on the podcast to reach to reach your, your followers and your viewers, just tell me and we'll make it happen. Um, I will support you 100%. And we will be seeing you Thank next you. Saturday with Evan signing her up for another year of Young Women Saved by Grace. Please tell everyone how they can get involved, how they can get their their daughters involved, and how they can connect with you before we get off. Um, you can connect with us. We on Facebook and Instagram, Young Women Saved by Grace. Um, you can reach us um, by web, um, YWSBG. Dot com. Um, we will get, well, I'll get, I'm the only one running this thing. So um, I will get back with you within 24 <laughs> hours because um, <laughs> I'm just dead okay. pertinent about this. So, um, well, like I said, you can get, a, um, right. you can reach us on Facebook and Instagram, Young Women Saved by Grace. You okay. can email us, Young Women Saved by Grace, the initials dot com. Um, and hey, we can just keep the game rolling, right. you know. And um, I just wanted yes. um, you to pray for this this vision. Um, uh, keep it, in, you know. We're gonna keep it in prayer, and um, let God do His work. Yes, yes. Let God do His work. Let Him do it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Snow. And um, I'm. You're I'm Thank you for having me. I'm very proud of you. I'm very proud of you. And I hope to see you um, next weekend with Miss Heaven. All right. Thank All you, right. Have Thank a great night. You too. Bye. Thank you, everyone, for joining us for the Speak Up and Inspire series as we interview Miss No Simmons of Young Women Saved by Grace. We will be back next Monday at 8 p.m. with Miss Katrina Thomas, the founder of Loving Yourself, No More Abuse. Have a great night.